and welcome to Bespin. As you can see, we have the basic features of a code editor. We have line numbers and uh, syntax highlighting. We support syntax highlighting for JavaScript, HTML, and CSS in this release, um, and that can be easily extended. We also have um, scroll bars and the like. In fact, and Canvas enables us to render these scroll bars or any arbitrary graphics that, that we'd want to. And in fact, the entire um, code editing region that you see here on the screen is implemented with Canvas. That means that we re-implemented a text editor component from scratch. We actually draw every character you see here on the screen. We um, take care of text selection and cursor blinking, all in JavaScript code. And that's enabled us to do something that we think is really important, and that is create a really high performance editing product. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in a bunch of lines of code, and I can actually create really large files. Let's just stop at 33,000 lines of code here. And the editor performance is still really, really nice. Of course, it's one thing to scroll through the file. It's another thing entirely to be able to actually type with high performance in the editor. Um, and even with a 33,000 line file, I can still mash on the keyboard as fast as I want to, and the editor keeps up with me. And that's actually um, something we've never seen done in a web editor. And if I just type at a normal speed, the editor is right on top of it and very fast. So performance is, as we mentioned, very, very important to us. And in this first preview release of Bespin, um, that's been our primary focus, is to make sure the performance was there so that uh, even really, really large files perform really well on the web. Now let's take a look at the command line. The command line here is at the bottom and this gives you access into a, a whole slew of features. Uh, here I'm just running help to kind of give you an overview of uh, the majority of the commands that are out there. Um, what's interesting about these commands is kind of how easy it is to actually go ahead and start using them. So you got obviously simple things like going to a particular file uh, and the like, but let's go ahead and uh, and take a look at a new command that I actually wrote recently. I had to sort something that was going on just kind of in uh, everyday life, and so I wrote a little command that would allow me to just quickly go ahead and sort that. Normally I'd use like a Unix command to go ahead and do that. So let's go find that command. Here we go, so sort. So this is just to kind of show you how easy it is to create commands. Uh, you'll notice that the API that we're passing here is very similar uh, to Ubiquity. That's because we want to unify these. But you go ahead, create your command, and you have information on execution. And here, I'm just going into the editor, pulling the model, and sorting it, and, and blitting it back to the uh, editor. But this is kind of where we see a lot of uh, extendability being kind of put in. You can just create your own commands, and then again, the vision that we talked about is being able to share them and do interesting things. Um, finally, just note kind of at the top here, uh, the various UI things that are going on. Obviously, if you just mouse over, you'll kind of see what's going on. These tie directly into the commands that we have with the editor. So they're actually running exactly the same code. And uh, in uh, later screencasts and stuff, we'll probably go through the code just to kind of show you if you're a developer. The next thing we want to show you is the Bespin dashboard. Um, the dashboard is uh, your home. Um, in this release, it's really just a file browser and the list of the open files. Um, and, you know, as we thought about how to represent the files in a project, we couldn't bring ourselves to use a tree. We just felt like trees were a little tired and a little hard to use in that regard. And we really liked um, this notion of sort of a hierarchical, horizontally laid out browser that you see here. And so that's what we've done. And uh, what you're actually looking at is the Bespin code base um, in Bespin. Um, and uh, you can go through all the individual files and such and then just double click on the one we want to launch. Um, and the dashboard we uh, implemented also with Canvas. Uh, we don't remember your state as we probably should um, in this release. We haven't got to that yet, sorry. Um, and so um, some of the interesting things we're able to do with uh, Canvas is measure text and implement a feature that, that uh, we haven't seen done on the web before where um, we can see how wide a label wants to be 
And if there's not sufficient room, we can do something intelligent to truncate the text, in this case, use an ellipsis in the middle to give you sort of a better feel for what that string really wants to say instead of just cutting it off, for example. Um, so uh, using Canvas enables us to do that because Canvas does have an API to get the width of a string and uh, act accordingly. Um, we also wanted to experiment with layout a little bit. So what you're seeing here there at the bottom is a list of open sessions. And in future releases, we want to display some really rich information about the sessions, like when each one was opened and details about editing and how long you've spent editing the individual sessions. But, you know, sometimes you're really not interested in that kind of verbose information and you want to just reduce this down in size. And it all resizes and uh, automatically figures out the most information it can display at the, at the given size you've given it. Uh, and if you want just a conventional tab set out, like most editors, you can get that too. But if you want to explore more information, you can certainly do that as well. Um, in order to facilitate all of this work, we created an experimental GUI toolkit for the web called Thunderhead. That's very experimental. <laughs> We're not sure uh, if we even like it at this stage, uh, but it is a part of this release, and we'll talk more about it in future screencasts. So this entire screen that you're seeing here is all rendered with the HTML canvas element using Thunderhead um, to do the layout and the rendering and the components and so forth. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Bespin. The release that we've just made is a tech preview that shows you some of what's possible today and we hope gives you a feel for where Bespin could go tomorrow. But although this is a tech preview demo, we really wanted you to actually play with it. This is shipping bits that you can get to on bespin.mozilla.com and you can register. You can go through and sign up. I'll click on the register for Bespin here, get going, and you'll be able to play with it. Now bear in mind, this is definitely an alpha product. Uh, it's actively being developed. We're playing with things all the time, so we apologize if little things break here and there. But we're really excited to see what you think as we kind of get this going. The reason we wanted to get this out so early was to be able to get a group together to really kind of have a place with the Bestman Project to kind of discuss these ideas. But while we have you on the screencast, we thought we'd share some of the ideas we've been kicking around for future releases of Bestman. After all, we are a lab, and uh, a lot of what we do is pretty experimental. The first thing we want to show you is an idea for how collaboration might work in Bestman. This is um, a screen capture of a prototype we have working in the lab for collab. And what you're seeing here are two different application windows open, um, two different sessions essentially, or two different, emulating two different users um, with the same file. And um, if we start um, this um, demonstration, you'll see that um, once I start typing in one window, this collaboration icon in the corner turns blue, and I can click on it, and I can see who's collaborating with me. And as I type in one of the windows, the content is edited, excuse me, updated automatically in the other window. Um, in fact, selection events are also sent across the wire. As you can see here, if I select this, it's selected in the other window. We did that because we thought it would be useful if you're walking someone through your code to be able to show them and highlight things. So this is one idea of how collaboration might work. Um, you know, and there's another kind of crazy feature that we've mocked up that we also want to show you. This is something we've been kind of thinking a little bit out of the box on. We're thinking about how people actually edit their files across projects and even edits within the same file. How can we kind of show what's going on with the project? So this notion here is a little idea called a, a heat map. Um, kind of looks like a bit of a defrag uh, in this example. It would clean that up. The notion is that we're kind of seeing what other people are doing and what we're doing and these different areas uh, showing us the edits and we can jump between them. Often you find that you're editing a function and then it calls another function that you're editing at the same time for example. This would kind of visually give you that information and then you can just click on that area to jump between the files. So again this is kind of an example of ways that we see especially using uh, notions like Ben talked about with Canvas to be able to do different things, interesting visualizations on this data. Uh, we have a lot of other ideas, and we're really jazzed to hear uh, what you think about having different metrics in the dashboard, for example. So again, check out the project on labs.mozilla.com slash projects slash Bespin. Uh, visit the Google group that we link to on that page and participate in Bespin. We really appreciate your time.